All right. Happy uh, Tuesday morning to you all. It's May 14th. Uh, we had some torrential rains yesterday afternoon, starting about 1 o'clock, 1.30, something like that. It got crazy. Uh, we got like four inches of rain in an hour and a half. Uh, it was insane. All of our streets, the neighborhoods were flooded here. I see the tow truck finally here to pick up this derelict vehicle. Uh, somebody tried running through the water in front of our house here. I'm gonna go this way just to uh, look at it. <laughs> uh, the water was up to our trees. So it was four feet deep here in the road, three and a half feet. And they hit that water hard enough that they peeled their license plate up. Look at that, crazy. Anyway, they stalled it, killed it, and uh, just abandoned it overnight here. So anyway. I'm going to get uh, out of this guy's way so he can do his job. Not sure where that thing's going, but it's going. Anyway, uh, yeah, and some... <laughs> I'm trying to refrain my words here, you know, refrain from cursing. Somebody, one of my uh, not-so-scrupulous neighbors, stole my trash can, uh, my recycle can, out of my front yard. <laughs> Everybody's trash cans were floating around in the rain and my son pulled them up uh, high up in our yard, like right next to my gate, my driveway gate. And we left uh, all the others that we could find down at the foot of our driveway, you know, just as a courtesy, instead of leaving them in the middle of the street where they floated to. And somebody walked all the way up our driveway and stole our recycle can. I mean, come on, what kind of a shit munch do you have to be to steal somebody's fucking trash can? Pardon my French. Oh, what a complete, Shit bird that has to be, man. I mean, come on. What kind of low life? Oh, I lost my trash can. I'm gonna go steal yours. Now I gotta pay for another fucking trash can. It's a hundred bucks, or 125. I don't remember. It happened before with the drug dealer neighbors that used to live across the street from us, and uh, they stole our trash can twice, motherfuckers. <laughs> I got a little pissed off. I went out and met them in the road and about threw down with them the second time they did it. So I. Uh, spray painted the numbers of our house on that one but the recycle can is actually given out by the city so it's a different uh, different animal anyway and they're serialized I mean I'm sure they could track which one belongs to which house but what an asshole come on stealing somebody's trash can come on shit ain't free because the trash company charges for that hey Boots slippery with water. I couldn't hit the shifter. Anywho, um, yeah, so we had a lot of flooding. I was trying to come back from a work engagement and pick up my uh, youngest over here at the elementary school for their let out at 3 o'clock. And uh, all the roads around here were flooded. West Green coming south was flooded. Fry coming south was flooded. So I ended up going through this neighborhood over here and popped out and came into our neighborhood. But then I still couldn't even get through our neighborhood over to where the pickup spot is. Uh, because the roads inside the neighborhood were flooded. Uh, there was one little stretch of road that had uh, probably three and a half feet of water and I was in my uh, Accord so I don't really want to go trudging that thing through that deep of water and kill it. So I parked it and walked about three blocks. So anyway, another unfortunate circumstance that I discovered uh, while editing my Life of Birch ride the first day going up uh, somehow the GoPro turned off the telemetry I have no idea how when why it must have been when the battery got low enough that it shut down from low battery and lost some of its settings but the only thing that it seems to have turned off was the uh, GPS I have no idea why it was working for the first you know half of the trip maybe uh, not even half of the trip, you know, first third of the trip or whatever, and uh, then it turned off the telemetry. Now, I got all the telemetry on my uh, my Garmin, you know, it records full track and everything, so I got my cumulative miles and all that kind of stuff, but uh, it's hard to match that up in camera, you know, for the short little clips that I record. It doesn't, uh, 
it doesn't give me a synchronization point to know where along the uh, full timeline of the Garmin relates to what's on the camera. So I have to visually compare and match up timestamps, and it's just a giant pain in the butt. So I'll uh, I'll probably put that video out with uh, a bunch of missing telemetry. You know, my normal ride stats that I put down at the bottom. I, I'll just kind of try to generally line it up but it's not going to be 100% accurate as far as speed and heading and all that I mean I can I can match speed just by looking at the video and figure out what uh, was on the screen you know the display down here versus what the uh, GPS telemetry is telling me uh, but you know lean angle and all that kind of stuff may not be exact that's all right it's just display information it's not formula one I'm such a perfectionist that it bothers me. <laughs> it just uh, drives me nuts. You know, with the cannonball footage, I had that same problem. Uh, and you know, and that's a, that's a good one. I was thinking of that last night. In retrospect, I don't think that I forgot to turn on the GPS cam or the GPS uh, on the camera itself. I got a new camera right before cannonball, and I set all the settings in it, put it on the helmet, and went on the ride. That was it. Uh, and I took my original one as a backup. Uh, which I should have just done that in reverse in retrospect but anyway uh, I know that I set that stuff I turned it on and then when I got back from the trip I had zero telemetry on the camera the only thing I had telemetry from was my 360 the dash cam and of course the GPS but that doesn't it leaves me with the same problem I can't line up my helmet footage uh, clips with where it is in that timeline easily it's hard so yeah anyway pain in the butt uh, so I wonder if that's a GoPro 11 glitch, turning off the GPS when you don't want it to. Because I was sure that I turned that thing on, and I just, you know, I was like, all right, fine, I'll blame it on myself, maybe I screwed up. But now that it just did that uh, on the Birch trip, because of the rain or whatever, I don't know. But I know I certainly did not turn off the GPS, because it was running at first, and then it wasn't. Anyway. Ooh, that sun's bright this morning. It's supposed to have a pretty nice day today. I mean, it's still moist out here, but uh, the temperature's really not all that bad. It's, uh, it's humid, but we're supposed to have a high in the mid 70s or something like that. And. Uh, Right now it's 69 degrees or something, 68, 69. Oh, it's amazing out here. Love it. And the highway is a parking lot this morning. Oh, goody. I didn't get fuel. That's all right. I'll do it in. I was going to stop at Walmart and get fuel. I totally forgot about it. I got enough for uh, my commute in, at least. I still haven't filled this thing up since I returned from the uh, Birch ride. Still running the same fuel from wherever the last stop was out there in uh, East Texas somewhere. Still need to adjust the chain slack on this thing. I haven't done that yet. As I said, I've done nothing since I got back from the trip except for work and uh, ride this thing. I need to pull the rear axle back a little bit, take out some slack in that chain. This is such a good machine. I love this thing. Every time I ride it. I'm very interested in that new NX500. I don't care for the looks. I prefer the previous generation uh, front end with the LED headlight and all that, but the new TFT dash might be a nice uh, add. And of course, you know, the upside down forks and dual front 
rotors and calipers and all that. Um, the previous generation 500X, uh, I guess the last generation 500X, because it's not called the 500X anymore, um, that has the upside down forks and dual discs up front. So that is a, it's a nice bike. And the new one, the NX500 adds a few new toys. Uh, it's just mostly a facelift. So I don't know. I don't care for the looks of the new one, but uh, the rest of the features I do like. I think that new NX500 with a decent touring screen on it, a MADSTAT or something like that, might be a, a heck of a long distance touring bike. Just like this one, you know, it's, a, it's amazing out on the open highway. It gets great fuel economy as long as you're not just flogging the piss out of it. I think the worst I've ever gotten out of it was on a trip that I took up to meet my dad at a, uh, a ham fest in Oklahoma and it was over kind of toward Wichita Falls and on into the, the west side of uh, the lower corner of Oklahoma I can't remember where it was uh, this is a couple years before he got really sick but anyway I took this up there and I had my shad SH36's on the back of it and a roll bag on the back and you know the, uh, the shad top case and all that so I had a lot of extra drag you know off the side of the bike a lot of extra aerodynamic loss so I was pulling a sail and I was late getting out on that trip and I just put the hammer down I mean I was running this thing full tilt almost the whole way up there easily 85 plus was my average let's just say uh, so yeah I was moving along pretty good and that means in a lot of the stretches I was doing better than triple digits so Anyway, uh, the fuel economy, I calculated it at the end of that trip, and I think I got 41 out of this, 41 or 42 on the worst tank. And my average for the whole trip, uh, at least the way up there, was uh, like 46 or 47. So yeah, it was, it was pretty low. But any engine is gonna do that when you just ring it out. It's outside of its performance envelope, so you're losing a lot of efficiency. But if you keep this thing, you know, right in the sweet spot between, let's say, right around 5,500 RPM, give or take 1,000 RPM, uh, it does quite well. Quite well. Footer, no footer, no footer, no footer, no footer. Nope. Full stop. <clears throat> Steamy in here all of a sudden. I still don't like that left latch release or lift on these uh, shoey face shields. Very annoying. If you're riding a scooter or a DCT, it's not a problem because you got your left hand free. But uh, when you come to a stop, and in a normal bike, you're going to be clutch in, so you can't lift that visor. All right, people. Get up there. Run it. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> He's hauling balls. <laughs> <laughs> You're running a hundred plus. I love the sound of inline fours, always have. You know, it's that high revving, high screaming Formula One kind of sound, but they're so inefficient compared to today's modern parallel twins. Uh, the 270 degree twins have become very, very popular over the last, let's say, 10 years. And uh, they're producing similar horsepower levels, not quite as high, obviously, because they're not as high revving. But as far as torque and usability for real-world riding and you know, 
real world use, they're great and they're a lot more efficient. I'm still thinking about the uh, NC750X. I would like to have that, but again, it's a duplicate of this bike, so, well, almost you know, a duplicate as far as ergonomics and roll in my riding chores. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I'm not really in a financial position to do it right now, but it's, uh, it's eating a hole in the back of my brain. Yeah, I'm hungry this morning. I didn't eat much yesterday trying to get myself back into a rhythm of uh, 16 to 18 hour fasts. I kind of broke that yesterday because I ate late, like 8.30 or 9, but I didn't eat much. I'm not really focusing so much on uh, calorie intake as uh, my motivator. It's more just the, the rhythm, the timing. I feel better, I feel more energetic and uh, lighter, you know, I don't feel so bloated uh, when I'm doing 16, 18 hour fasts. Yeah, I'll stop before you hit me, Addy. Check off. Why are so many Audi drivers such douchebags? I've coined that phrase, Audi bag. So many of them, like four out of five, maybe nine out of ten, drive like douchebags, man. Super aggressive, just no care or regard for anybody else in the world but themselves. I think I talked about that in one other vlog. Uh, Porsche drivers can be douchey, but they're less douchey than Audi drivers because their car costs more and they're trying to not wreck it, I guess. But, uh, yeah. As far as douchebaggery scale, I think uh, it's probably Audi, BMW, Tesla, then uh, Toyota, Prius. I don't know why those people always drive like such assholes. Uh, and then Porsche, kind of at the bottom of that list. Well, and then trucks of any flavor, you know, they're, they're always sitting right there near the top, but, yeah. Something about the brand, I guess. Maybe it could be marketing. I don't know if this tracks a certain personality type, I'm not sure. flying around me at the last second. That's okay. There you go. Roundabout. Nobody coming. You don't stop. Come on, you shitheads. Learn how to use it. I'm sure it's not your first trip through here. See? Now we yield because somebody's coming. Now you go because nobody's coming. Go! Today! on a street corner within 25 feet of the street oh, stop sign yeah, good stuff blocking view creating a hazard because you're a lazy shit Again, <laughs> a parking space up to a stop sign. Yeah, that's just, that's messed up. It's against state law. Some laws are uh, silly and uh, shouldn't be adhered to. Others are common sense safety practice. Some people just can't wrap their brains around. Of course, common sense isn't that common anymore more the exception rather than the rule. I 
don't know what that is. I mean, it's it's obviously part of the culture and the education system, dumbing the population down. That's always been the goal since Rockefeller's days when he created the uh, public school system. Nothing about public. It's a government indoctrination system. Political ideology uh, indoctrination. But uh, people just don't have critical thinking and logical thinking anymore they wander about their lives and wonder how things manage to slap them in the face so unexpectedly well <laughs> open your eyes right before you walk into the wall you might learn a thing or two all right everybody welcome back to the day it's uh, 7 30 7 25 yeah pretty much 7 30 long day we got a lot done at the uh, client site today doing door controller door access system over there and oh man we spent almost the entire day on a single door because the place was built like a bunker and they filled the door frames in these uh, cinder block walls they filled the door frames with concrete i mean filled them <laughs> so we're trying to drill holes for uh, wires and everything else and oh my god what a complete nightmare but we managed to get it done and then uh, that was the what door we thought was going to be easy uh, so we thought yeah we'll tackle this and this will be a quick easy job no not so much uh, and then we finished that up about I don't know three o'clock three thirty something like that and thought okay well let's just pack it up and call it a day because man this one sucked so just on an off chance I went over to another door that was a similar setup but not as uh, not quite as difficult uh, and the thing wasn't filled with concrete and the previous uh, mounting system was almost a dead ringer uh, even fit for the new stuff like oh man we should have started here we could have been uh, two doors down anyway got it done and we went and had dinner over at uh, Pizzitola's very very good uh, barbecue place fantastic uh, I haven't been there in a long time it's been whew, 10 years plus maybe 15 in quite a while very good very good food I had the uh, brisket dinner brisket plate and what is it Texas street corn I think they called it it was very good not Mexican street corn it wasn't as spicy and uh, what else did I have? What was it oh yeah uh, four cheese Smoky mac and cheese, whatever they call their stuff. Good stuff. I'm full. I'm hurting. I ate too much. And every one of these bumps is letting me know about it. Ugh. So, yeah. Anyway, time to go home. Staring into the sunset. I'll be on I-10. Uh, HOV lanes all the way home. Traffic should be pretty light this time of night, but staring into the sun is never fun. While it's green, people, come on, keep going. Yeah, now you're catching on. Oh, yeah, of course. And you're going to hit the brakes and change lanes in front of me at the same time. Great. All right, so I'll just uh, catch all these people sleeping and get over there where I need to be. Blah. Oh, boy. All right, office chair, that's one way to roll stuff around. Those wheels aren't going to last very long, though. You're going to have to upgrade your conveyance. Hey, sunshine. Woohoo, can't see squat. Damn, that's bright. Whoa, that's bright. Blinding. I need to clean the uh, drop down visor in this thing. It's still smutted up from the uh, road trip to Annapolis not really dirty dirty but it's kind of hazy boy that uh, isn't doing well for the uh, sun glare here guy slowed down for me that was nice
always try to pay respects to those who are driving nicely and not being complete douchebags, because it's a very rare occasion here in Houston. I haven't gotten fuel, but when I started my trip, when I can still read the uh, gauge, <laughs> can't read it right now. Uh, when I started the trip, I still had a dot of fuel, so it should be enough to get me out there. When it starts flashing, I've usually got 40 miles left in the tank. So stop on my way to the house and fill this thing up. Uh oh, got a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep my eyes on the road. That's hard. We just had all that crazy rain yesterday, which should have washed all the crap out of the air, but we've got air quality alerts popping off all over the place. And I've been sneezing like crazy today, so I don't know how that works. Whatever cold front it was blew in more stuff with it than washed out with the rain. I don't get that. Kyoko, I hate this thing. God, I hate it. 70 indicated. Okay, so I'm doing 75. That's good enough. Stay in the traffic. Staying out of trouble, hopefully. And I'm not flashing yet, so yeah, good enough to get home. That's the problem with trying to drive nice in Houston, man. If you drive anywhere even close to the speed limit, you are just going to get walked all over like that guy in the truck that's just getting ready to pass me on my left now. He came flying in the merge lane right next to me at 80 plus, probably not even HOV, so now he's gonna jack back over in front of me. It's hard to drive nice in Houston. You gotta go so fast just to stay up with the frantic pace. And then of course, you know, invariably you'll get pulled over for speeding and well, everyone else is doing it. And on the motorcycle, you gotta kinda go with the flow, you know? When in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in Houston, speed as everyone else does. Lest you get run over and flattened. Zoom, zoom, 85, 90. There have been a lot of constables out on this stretch of road lately, so I'm trying to mind my P's and Q's. I don't need any more tickets. I went 20 years without any tickets, and then just bam, 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 out of nowhere. You know, I got three or four just right away. I see there's one on the other side. Uh, and I got nailed for stupid shit, you know, little shit, like that one in uh, Louisiana, going from a 35 zone to a 45 zone, and like, literally 50 feet before the sign I rolled on the throttle a little bit just to match up to 45 and cop going the other way nailed me said I was going 41 and a 35 $385 ticket and then I paid it and they didn't mark it as paid and sent a notice of suspension to Texas and Texas honored it without checking anything of course and I've been fighting all that bullshit so that one little six mile an hour over technicality uh, has cost me over $2,000 so far. And I missed a court date this morning. There's another one right there. They're out. I'll let other people snag the tickets. Um, I missed a court date this morning. God. Somehow I put it in my phone for Thursday, but it was Tuesday. It was supposed to be all the way out in Baytown this morning at like 8 o'clock. And the attorney sent me a message at 9.05 or 9.10, something like that, saying, where are you? Your hearing is right now. <laughs> oh shit! What? 
and it was for another suspension, you know, it was a suspension hearing saying, uh, because you got two tickets while you were driving under suspended, both of which were bullshit, by the way, because I had paid. It never should have been suspended. Uh, long story, I won't go into that again. But anyway, Texas sent me this notice of uh, suspension saying, we're gonna suspend your license for another six months because you got two tickets while driving under suspension, which again, is bullshit, but anyway. Uh, so I hired my attorney to take care of it again, and uh, he said that it, he would represent it and I wouldn't even need to show up. You know, he would show that it was all a, a technicality, you know, that they hadn't cleared it in the system and it wasn't my fault. You know, I did what I was supposed to do, which was give my money to the state uh, three times now. And uh, I wouldn't need to show up. He would just take care of it. And then last week, they sent me this notice saying that, no, you have to show up in person in Baytown. What the fuck? It's on the other side of town. It's like 85 miles from my house. I gotta drive an hour and change to get over there? Are you fucking kidding me? So I'm like, all right, fine, whatever, I'll show up. <laughs> so I put it on my calendar and somehow, either I fucked up or they gave me the wrong date, but uh, I set it for Thursday morning instead of Tuesday morning. So anyway, I missed it this morning. And he said the uh, judge granted a 90 day extension or reprieve that if I didn't get any more tickets in the next 90 days, then they would waive the suspension. But again, I've already paid for this three times over, including this one. I paid the fee, I paid the attorney 250 bucks, so total it's 750 bucks right there, $500 plus the $250 attorney fee. So I've already paid this three times over, and they're still saying, yeah, we're gonna suspend. And when this is all said and done, they're probably gonna find another excuse. Oh yeah, you owe us another 500 plus your attorney fees. And another 500 plus your attorney fees. And another 500. Lather, rinse, repeat. You get caught in this vicious cycle where the state is just looking to punish you and there's no way to get out from under. Because I'm not gonna fucking stop driving. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. You can't participate in this society unless you're mobile and driving. So go fuck your hat. I'm driving suspended the license over a stupid technicality because they can't clear a checkbox on a goddamn form in a computer. It's not my problem. Well, they're making it my problem. It's not my fault. How about that? Fuck the state. It's the problem with law enforcement in any of these uh, large cities, uh, government in general, is it's not there to protect you or to serve you. The, the whole thing about protect and serve, nah, that's bullshit. It's punitive. Everything is punitive. They want to punish you and extract money from you. So it's not to serve and protect, it's to punish and extort. That's what it's for. They justify their existence and their salaries by extracting more tolls and more taxes from the citizenry. It's not about the public welfare or anything else. It's about leeching off of other people. I'm gonna be blind as a bat when I get to the house. <laughs> My right eye is just nothing but sunspots right now. Bike, a couple of bikes. You boys go ahead and grab those tickets. 100 plus, threading through traffic. Yeah, that's just dumb. Have at it, do your thing, but that's dumb. Flashing, I can't read shit with that sun. Yeah, I just started flashing. That'll be another nice upgrade, uh, thinking about the, the new NX500 with that TFT, or even I guess the, the previous generation 500X, it has a reversed LCD dash on it. Uh, and of course this guy's sitting in the sun, Dick. Uh, the reversed LCD dash is a whole lot easier to read. You know, you can you can see it. This thing you can't read. You got to be like, put your face right on it and hope there's no sun glaring in your eyeballs. So my only complaint about this bike is that display. Barrel. Oh, they had flooding out here. I've been seeing that today uh, on the highway in several places. There are barrels and uh, barricades just kind of lined up on the side of the, the road. So I guess uh, 
there was enough flooding that they had to mark it in a few spots. <laughs> the Jeep is paying a toll, but the, uh, the other guy that went blowing by me in the Porsche or whatever it was, got a free pass because the uh, Popo is already busy. It's already got a customer. Trees, I can see where I'm merging. green people it's been green since way the hell back there's the guy's on his phone I might look behind you Mm, feels good out here tonight. The temperature's pretty, uh, pretty nice. I don't even know what the temperature is. I've gone 0.2 miles into my, or no, 0.2 gallons into my F trip. So I've got at least 0.2 left, probably 0.5 left. Uh, yeah, I can't see the weather at this screen, but yeah, it's like 75, 76 degrees out here right now. Feels great. I like it. I like it a lot. Getting sleepy. All that food is working on me. Need a coffee. I'm gonna make a double espresso when I get home. I'm gonna make a Vietnamese coffee. That's what I'm gonna do. triple espresso with uh, some condensed milk in there. That sounds good. I have an AeroPress, uh, a couple of different AeroPresses that I've been using for a long time. For uh, camping and home use and whatnot, um, but I also have a coffee jack, which is uh, a different uh, little animal. It's a high-pressure pump-up uh, manual espresso maker. It's a neat little machine. I don't take it traveling, even though it's kind of supposed to be designed for portable travel use, uh, because it has a uh, glass container uh, the, for the water vessel on the top of it so not a great idea to take uh, moto camping and that sort of thing and holy crap is the uh, fuel station full this evening I might have to go to a different spot I picked the peak refill time apparently hey somebody's coming out yep, it's your turn go I'm going right there Uh, nope, somebody else got it. All right. Well, I guess not. Okay, they were waiting. I'll let them have it. I'll find a different one. Looks like we got some of the pumps shut down. Maybe that's part of our uh, problem. Well, I guess I'll go to another fueling spot. Yeah, it's too busy here, so yeah, screw it. Must be having system problems at Walmart tonight. Maybe it's sunspot activity. <laughs> Huge sunspot stuff going on right now. Solar storm, whatever they're calling it. <laughs> You're turning, so am I. Yeah, I don't like going to this uh, station down here 
anymore because they are far too expensive. But maybe that new Chevron station uh, is open. The one that used to be a CVS. They might have opened up. I'll see if I get lucky. If they have, that's going to drive down the prices at that uh, uh, competing station across the street. I thought that one was a Chevron too. Huh. There's no way you could have Chevrons on both corners. Unless it's the same owner. Who knows. Competition on that corner would be good. Keep those people honest. Because man, they were 50 cents higher a gallon than everybody else around here. They started out cheap and then just literally overnight raised their prices to uh, bait and switch everybody. So let's see if this new station is open yet. Doesn't appear so. Nah, they're not open for business yet. Oh, well, maybe they are. Can't tell. What do you think? No, no, they still got tape up over there. These are construction people. They're not uh, customers. So that's a Chevron. And that's a Shell. Okay, yeah, I can't remember if this was a Chevron or Shell. So that's good. Probably not the same owners, and that will uh, start some competition here and uh, maybe make uh, fuel prices over here in this little corner a little bit more palatable. Because those are some greedy bastards over there. Yeah, look at that. 339. You guys probably can't read it from here. At Walmart back there, it was 298. So they're 40 cents cheaper, or 40 cents more expensive here. Crazy. Just because they've got a monopoly on the corner. Once there's competition, hopefully uh, they'll have to start being a little bit more reasonable. <laughs> You're turning right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left. Doofus. All right, I'll pay them uh, three thirty-nine for their fuel today, but not again. Oh my God! Look at that. 50 cents difference between regular and plus. Yeah, fuck that. I'm putting the cheap shit in here. That's insane, man. So they're already 40 cents more expensive than everybody else, and then they want another 50 cents for mid-grade. Fucking crazy. That's crazy. Cinco Village. Jack-offs. Don't hold back. Tell them how you really feel. I'll put the cheap shit in here and then a shot of uh, fuel stabilizer octane booster out of my garage and it's going to be cheaper than paying four dollars extra here. Yeah, I want a car wash. Uh, you already know who I am. You know who I am based on the phone number. Yeah, I know. Three cents a gallon. Oh, thanks. Feels so special. Whole three cents when you're charging 40 cents more than everybody else. If I didn't need fuel right now, I wouldn't buy this. Yeah, all over town today I've been seeing fuel prices for right at $3 a gallon. And then these guys are raping everybody 40 extra cents. That's crazy. Suckers like me that are out of gas have to pay it. Should take about four gallons, probably. So I run it into the reserve area. Yep, that's the plate right there. Oh, look at that. A couple pennies over. Yep, right at four gallons. I'm not going to give them any extra pennies. There you go. 13.20. Right up to the plate. Okay. You got my $13.20, and that's all you're going to get ever again. Two thirty on that trip. Could have gone a lot further had I not been in the throttle so hard on the way home. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I've got to take these pictures. Come on. I've got every fuel up on this thing since uh, it was new, I think.
It was three cents less than that, I need to remember. 336, yeah. Anywho. Okay. Off to the Hacienda. I don't know if the battery's gonna live until I get home, but we'll see. going. They cut all the bushes out of this median, that's good. Trees and stuff, it was uh, kind of hard to see at some of these intersections. They, uh, I don't know why they planted trees all the way down these medians instead of leaving, you know, a hundred yards or so clear, uh, but they're finally getting the hint all up and down Fry Road here and several of the other wooded roads like this. Uh, they're cutting the trees back near the intersections, so people can see without getting creamed by speeders blasting down the road. When you're expecting traffic to be going, you know, 35, 45 miles an hour, and then you've got these maniacs that are going 65, 70, it's just totally out of place. You're not anticipating that kind of a closure rate, so it's causing a lot of accidents. There have been a ton of uh, really bad accidents up and down Fry Road here in the last year. Like this line of trees here is very hard to see through. You gotta really focus on it and see if there's anything moving because so many people don't drive with their headlights or their DRLs on. All right, well, home again, home again. Another uh, commute day, done and gone. And uh, I might have my uh, Vietnamese coffee and then go for a walk. It feels really good out here. Probably help me settle that massive uh, meat meal that I had. <laughs> we got drainage covers and all kinds of stuff everywhere all over the streets from the flood yesterday. Oh yeah, you can see my uh, flood line. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you can see a couple of them. There's one debris line, there's another one over there, but there's another ring right up to the base of my trees. The water was all the way up here yesterday, so four feet deep plus. Crazy. All right, y'all. Thanks for tagging along. I will catch you for the next ride. You gonna howl? You gonna howl? <laughs> she got a bone. Cool. Oh, yeah. How was your day?